Hey everybody, Aslan here. Today we're going to look at a manhunt video on Christmas Day. i got to give a shout out to WingspanTT at TopTierTactics.com. Most of you know who he is. Check out the description. Some of these videos might be up there. Uh, we're going to look at four different videos here. we got one kill round, three stun rounds, three different stun rounds, all of which are extreme variety. Which doesn't mean much in this game because it's so easy to get extreme variety in ACR. I'm going to use smoke poison. The reason I dis poison so much in this game, other than the fact that you could get stunned two hours after you use it on your target, is that your teammates have a you have a very high chance of having teammates who are going to kill your poisons, considering it's so hard to play with your friends in this game. So we're going to start off with a uh, focus poison on the bench. Anytime you see somebody on the bench, it's an excellent time to get a focus aerial poison, so forth. I'm going to use the haystack here so I don't get stunned. Anytime you see a blended group up here like this, Automatically assume it's the guy in the front middle, just like that. I mean, that's just how people hide, and it's almost a guaranteed kill. Let's talk about some perks here. Kill buffer and overall cooldowns. Almost every mode, stun, uh, kill, it, they seem to work the best, and I like those. The main strategy I use, I've talked about this before, but if you haven't seen another one of my videos, I try to go for the target that nobody else is going after. It always works best for me, because it gives you time to set up your kill, you're not competing with good players on getting kills, and that's what it, I just like to do. I don't like finishing my targets. It takes too much time, maybe just once a match to uh, get my extreme variety. But I do revive my teammates because, you know, they're their teammates and you gotta help them out. So my radar tells me it's either this guy or the one on the left. Because I'm not sure, I'm gonna stick around because I'm not sure if he knows who the right target is. And as soon as I saw he, got, he didn't get a kill there, I'm gonna sneak in. So don't ninja your teammates' kills. But be prepared if they do make a mistake to get in there and help them out or help yourself out. You know, I'm not going to chase my target here. Most of you guys know I hate chasing. I'm going to go for the revive, help my teammate out. I'll get my extreme variety. Here's that strategy I was talking about earlier. Fathom Knight's a great player. When I see him going left, I'm going right. I don't want to compete with him on kills. I love it's a great, great way to use a group here, especially standing next to somebody that looks like me. And this tree right now is going to tell me that it's this target right here because of the line of sight and my radar. So I'm getting ready to run away, but since he doesn't chase me, I'm not going to put myself in high profile. Up here, um, that piece of doo-doo over there on the right tells me that there's a tripwire mine. What I do is, in the beginning of the match, I look around whoever gets kills and see what abilities have been used. And if I see there's a tripwire used in the beginning of the match, I'm automatically going to assume that there's tripwire throughout the match. Greater variety already three minutes into the match. I cannot explain this kill coming up. It's this guy. Don't tell me how I did it. I, I think it's just instinct. I've just been playing for a while. Over here I want to put myself in a position for aerial. Anytime you can aerial, you know, go for the aerial. Don't stay on the ground. It's this douche who's twisting his head around like the exorcist. And as for the bench kill that I, I fail here, I should know better but Anytime there's someone on the bench and there's only one person, assume that it's the other person who's disguised. So wait a few seconds, see if a disguise wears off, and don't kill the wrong target like I just did. Back to this aerial thing I was talking about. There's two targets over here. I can run in there and just jump on somebody, but as you'll see, I put myself in such a better position being up here. I'm waiting for my smoke to come back. Here's that front middle strategy again that I was talking about. It's this guy right here. Uh, my smoke comes back right now as soon as it comes back I go in and drop smoke on the kill and that gives me opportunity to get two kills a little gl glitchy over there but because of that because of my you know I'm in the aerial position so I could drop smoke right as soon as I get the kill it just doesn't get much better this guy's a noob and I know he's a noob and so I'm always putting myself in a position to get a kill when he's around but uh, he will uh, he'll get revived by somebody else which means I'm not gonna waste my time reviving him and I want to use my poison. This is a problem with you know playing manhunt with random people. This is this is my lock. There's no way anybody else knows it's him. But here's that new boss talking about running him and killing him for 100 points. Imagine if I poisoned him. That's even worse. So that's really the main problem I think with manhunt in uh, ACR is not being able to group up, group up with your teammates. And with the reverse meter, you're trying to move slow to get incognito kills, but your teammates have a very different way of moving around and just screws you up really. The main thing uh, in here too is if your teammate gets stunned, you can literally just press L1 and it will give you the target even if you didn't lock him or not. And then you can go in for the kill which is what I do over here. And 
you know, having a six, six thousand, seven thousand point kill round is really good in ACR. You should be very proud of it. It's not easy to do. Uh, I got so many kills this round, and I was still only able to get sixty-eight hundred with two poisons. See over here, I had no idea who it was. I didn't even sit there and lock somebody, but as soon as he locked, stunned my teammate, I just pressed L1. It automatically gave me a lock, I, and I, I just jumped up there and pressed square, and it automatically killed for me. Gonna switch over to a stun round now. Very important as soon as the stun round starts is to jump straight into the blend group. People forget or don't know how important these points are. Think about how many times you've lost by 100 points and how just one of these bonuses would make up 200 points for your entire team. You don't want to stand in the same exact blend group though because then your pursuer can just throw a, uh, a smoke at you and knock your whole team with one smoke and that would be terrible. I'm going to bum rush these guys before they get a chance to figure out what's going on. And over here I'm going to run back to my teammates and then run back in. So what I'll do is as soon as my abilities are down I'll run to my teammates, wait for them to use their abilities and then I'll use those abilities to sneak in some more stuns. There's the extreme variety streak bonus which is so easy to get. And I'm just going to stay and fight it out until I die. The sooner I die, the sooner I'll get my abilities back with my boost cooldowns. Now a little bit different. Initially I said stay with group, now I'm going to tell you stay with your group but actually stay in the same exact blend group because although in, th in the beginning they could throw smoke, they've already blown most of their cooldowns here and this is a great time for you to sneak in some more stuns. So at this point it doesn't matter if you stay in the same exact blend group as your teammates. Also, I don't want to pop out yet because there's nobody here for me to stun yet. You kind of want to pop out when you need to. A lot of times people see stunning and they come out and then they just die. When you're in a blend group, don't come out until you really need to and there's targets for you to be able to uh, to stun. And we're going to switch it up here. Same match. Um, got my boost cooldowns as you can see on the bottom left. I'm hiding in that blend group for 10 points, but I'm just kind of wasting time. Better if I run in there and get some stuns. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. I get 4 stuns here, 2 knockouts, and assist and the streak bonus. So 4 stuns, 800, 2 knockouts, 200, and assist 50 points. Streak bonus, 250. I'm talking about 13, almost 1300 points just on stuns. So imagine sitting in a group getting 10, 10, 10, or running in there and getting 1300 points in a matter of seconds. It just doesn't compare. It's all about being aggressive. A few matches later, the reason I'm going to show this match particularly is for the corner stun, which you'll see in a little bit. Know that the maps, you know, they're different sizes, obviously. I'm already waiting for my pursuer to come. This is such a small map. As soon as they spawn, I'm ready to start stunning. I don't need to pop out here. The guy ran right past me. Don't make yourself obvious if you don't need to. Gonna get a quick streak bonus here. Smoke, mute, mute. Well, one mute. Smoke and mute. Instead of running away, I'm just going to run to my teammates because I see the tripwire mine. Great time to uh, take advantage of my teammates' abilities. I don't even know these guys on my team, but I know that they're ready to fight by them staying in that group. There's uh, Extreme Variety again. Got some lures. What I'll do here is I'll pretend to be hiding in this group. Maybe he doesn't see me because he got stunned by somebody else. A lot of times I'll get a stun out of that. It doesn't work here. Let's talk about corner stuns. Corner stuns, if you're around the corner and you're trying to jump out the last second to get a stun, you really can tell by your pursuer. If they're running through the chase breaker or whatever corner they're running past, then you know that they have no idea you're there and you can get the stun. But if they're walking pretty slowly, you're going to have to use a cooldown. Let's look at over here. Okay, see how he slows down right there? I'm automatically going to assume at that point he knows I'm around the corner and I'm going to use my cooldown. Another great strategy there, what I do is every time I see somebody, a, a pursuer, I'll pretend to run away from them and I'll run right back and get a stun. Most of the time I get it because they're expecting that I'm going to be on the run and they don't have their finger on the trigger. Last stun round we're going to look at here. This is a uh, very different than the other two we looked at. This is a very aggressive stun round. As soon as the match starts, I'm going to run to the middle of the map where I expect my pursuers to be. I'm going to start stunning. I'm using long lasting smoke, which means when they throw smoke and I throw smoke, I'm automatically going to assume that my smoke might has a chance of lasting longer than theirs if they haven't crafted it for long lasting which means I can pull off an extra stun here and then we're just going to jump right to the second part of this video this is four minutes later as you can see I'm running back to the same exact spot our pursuers have not left the middle of the map we've just been running back and stunning them over and over and over and over again in the same spot if this strategy is very dependent on your teammates oh there's a pretty cool strategy here I lost my cooldown so what I did was I did a little bit of a circle run back behind my teammates even though I died and uh, I see them running in and I'm going to take advantage of the smokes that they drop 
But yeah, this strategy of running back in over and over again and keeping your pursuers in one spot only works if your pursuers aren't using smoke bomb, which is uh, very likely. But you, you still might be able to get around that. But other than the smoke bomb, it only works if your teammates are on board with you. And so if you're playing with friends or you've got a mic and you're able to convince the people on your team to do it, then you're in good position. I think that's it for this video. A few more stuns at the end, another streak bonus. I think this was a seven or eight thousand point stun round, which is pretty decent for a stun round. And this is how you know this is how we do it. Next match against these guys, I wouldn't be able to do the same tactic again. I think they would all be expecting it, and they would all bring smoke, and you're just asking for it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out toptiertactics.com, Wingspan TT, and also don't forget to subscribe the Mighty Aslan.